So we now have enough background information to officially define the definition of an inverse function. So to do this, let's begin by letting f be a one-to-one -one function. Then we say that g is the inverse of our function f if the following two conditions hold true. So we say that g is the inverse of our function f if the composition g followed by f is equal to x and if f followed by g of x is also equal to x. And both of these must hold true for all x in the domain of the function. Now, a couple of notes about this definition. We can actually observe this here. We can say that if g is the inverse of f, then of course f must be the inverse of g. Now, additionally, we want to think way back to when we were exploring inverse relations and the notation we used for the inverse of that set A. We have a similar notation here for our function g. So when such a function g exists, we denote the inverse of f using that same notation, f to the negative 1. And we can apply this inverse notation to our composition definition. Now, just like with sets of points, we want to be careful and exercise caution that this is inverse notation, not an exponent. So now that we've seen the formal definition for the inverse of a function, let's explore this idea in more detail with the following example.